What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the first moment of my last three weeks that I've even been remotely presentable. I just came from Gabe Lee's Opry debut, and I was like a proud dad sitting in the audience while he sang Eveline, and he sang Rusty. If you've been here a while, you know Honky Tonk Hell was my number one album of 2020. Gabe just dropped his fourth album this week, and it was just so cool to see him up there. But yeah, other than tonight, I've just been a sweaty mess and in work clothes and covered in sawdust because I'm actually fixing up my new house. I bought a house recently out in the burbs of Nashville and I have my apartment and the house for this like three and a half week period. And I thought if I go really ham and I put in full days over there, I can get a whole new floor in by the time I move in because I now have to move in like, a week and so I've just been putting in long days ripping out carpet ripping out tile trying to save as much money as I can because I spent the money on the down payment um, and uh, getting the house ready for a brand new floor which it's gonna be awesome if it all works but yeah I'm a little stressed I'm definitely preoccupied if you follow me on Instagram or TikTok you know I'm in this kind of interesting cosplay rebrand as a DIYer which people seemingly really enjoy but I'm really here and on the internet to talk about country music and country music we will talk about because I've had time to listen to a bunch of stuff while sitting there and trying to raise the level of my floor by 1930 seconds of an inch. And since people sort of enjoyed the formatless last video, I will give you another formatless video where I'm just talking about random songs because I'm not going to put much time into this edit because I got to go work some more. First person I want to talk about is Jelly Roll, someone whose music I've never really dove into, perhaps because I'm a little bit scared of the country rap world because I once, you know, made the mistake of saying hip hop party on the internet and, you know, I never lived that down for years. But Jelly Roll is someone that obviously I have seen happening. He had his song Son of a Sinner and now he has this album called Witsit Chapel that is huge. I mean, I'm a sales hawk and that album has been huge and so I wanted to dive into Jelly Roll. I wanted to give this album a listen, and man, I was really stunned by it. Before the cold November rain. It's really just real. The subject matter of this album is so much more interesting than most albums, and it's pretty darn focused. Jelly Roll sings a lot about how he was a convict, how he made mistakes, how his friends are behind bars, but also how he's been redeemed and he has this Christian faith and you can judge him if you want, but that's not going to affect him because he has grown and become a different person. Honestly, the backdrop of criminality on this album makes it incredibly intriguing and the frankness with which he's singing about his friends that are behind bars and talking about their crimes on that one song he has with Struggle Jennings and Brantley Gilbert, excellent. The song She, where this girl once was this kind of shining, good member of society, but then after taking a few pills, now when you see her at a party, you wouldn't even recognize her. That's a real freaking song. Save Me, which is this just moment of vulnerability, crying out to be saved that he has with Lainey Wilson. I mean, a showstopper. I'm a love call. And then Naomi even brings in a touch of self-deprecating humor along with a dismissal of someone else's judgment. And I love all of the little turns of phrase in the chorus and how it keeps building. Like at first I thought, oh, they're mixing metaphors here. But then I was like, oh, that's the point. He says, nail me to the cross outside of your ivory tower that you sit so high on your horse. Blah, blah, blah. Like it just goes and goes and goes. And that's kind of the interesting conceit of the chorus. While this album may be about prison, it does not sound like Folsom Prison Blues. It does not sound like some kind of spare singer-songwriter. This is big production, big percussion, but you know, I actually have really enjoyed listening to it while there's a saw going or something because I can still hear what he's saying. And so maybe I am primed to enjoy Jelly Roll in this sort of 1% blue collar moment of my life. But production aside, it's just the content here that's freaking real. It's interesting. It's different. It stands out from the pack. And I love it. The guy's got something real to say. And ultimately, that cuts through any genre, any production style. So here for it. 
The other big album that's come out recently is Taylor Swift's Speak Now, Taylor's version. This is the latest of her re-records because she's recording her whole old catalog because she was unhappy that she was unable to buy it outright. Now, these songs on Speak Now are excellent. I always have thought Taylor should get credit for this being all solo rights on this record. And it's always so fun to hear what strange turns of phrase happen when someone is writing by themselves, like on the title track where she says, she is yelling at a bridesmaid somewhere back inside a room wearing a gown shaped like a pastry. Freaking love that, that adds so much life into music. And for the most part, although she did not bring back producer Nathan Chapman, these are pretty similar sounding versions of these songs in the musical sense. I would say they are missing some of the sparkle of her youthful vocal you don't get that kind of like girlish immediacy on this version of Enchanted or Haunted. And that's not to say Taylor sounds bad. Her voice sounds great. She's become a much better singer, but you know, it's missing that kind of life. I'm not a fan of the lyric change on Better Than Revenge. I liked the toxic version where she's like, she's better known for the things that she does on the mattress because I mean, that song is like a bitchy thought. That's the point of the song, Better Than Revenge. So just let it be bitchy. We don't need to like morality police our most negative thoughts. I even thought that way back in the day when Sam Hunt had that song, That Ain't Beautiful. And everyone was like, this song is slut shamey. And I'm like, uh, yeah, that's the point. It's a toxic thought. Let it be toxic. But I was very excited production-wise to hear that she did bring back kind of the male backing harmonies on stuff like ours. I always thought those added a lot to the early Taylor sound. Of the vault tracks, I see mostly why they were vault tracks. I think the ones that stood out to me were I Can See You because it feels so like slinky. It feels very midnightsy. I think Castle's Crumbling. I'm surprised that sort of narcissist, reputation-obsessed Taylor was already alive and well writing songs like Castle's Crumbling all the way back in the speak nowadays. But I think that song is kind of like a preview of things to come for a big narrative of Taylor feeling like she's not in control of her reputation. But by far my favorite, and probably the countryest track on this record, is Timeless, the final song. I think this song is gorgeous, where Taylor's just kind of having this weird thought. She even says that. She's like, it's hard to explain, but I was looking at this photo of this 1930s bride, and I saw you in it. I could imagine us in another era, we would have been timeless, because that's how great our love is. She even at one point goes back to medieval times, and she's like, hundreds of years ago, I'm pledged to marry another man, but you and I would have been timeless. It's like such an encapsulation of that feeling of fairy tale themes and dragon slaying long live energy that's on speak now. But yeah, most of the other vault tracks I think are pretty forgettable. Like I said, sometimes this vocal feels a little lifeless, but that's the other main thing I've been listening to. I did listen today to all of Gabe Lee's new record, Drink the River, and I adore that title track, Drink the River. So beautiful. And I can't drink the river to dry the land. I got a little emotional in this one song called Lidocaine, uh, which is a numbing agent, and what a cool name for a song, first of all. But when Gabe is telling his mom, like, yeah, I'll be home from tour soon, and it's just this loaded moment. Oh, so good. And then I really like that song, Property Line. It's one of the more fun moments. There's that, and even Jesus Got the Blues are kind of the fun moments on this record. But on Property Line, uh, I love the lyric, Two knucklehead something came run philandering over the hill. Gabe is a poet. I love how he writes. I need to get into this album more, but for a first listen, loved it. I also got about halfway through Jake Owen's record, Loose Cannon. This record doesn't really feel like an album to me in the same way that Jelly Rolls did or Taylor's did or Gabe's does. Like it, it just is kind of a collection of songs and... I feel like you can tell that he didn't write it. I, I don't think he wrote any of the ones I listened to, but I got halfway, um, and I really, just sonically, I really like that song, When It All Shakes Out. Almost reminded me of an Eric Church track. Very adventurous. I checked out Dylan Marlowe's Dirt Road When I Die EP, and this is extremely listenable. I feel like Dylan Marlowe knows his way around a hook. Uh, the production on this, I think it's mostly by Joe Fox, sounds really fresh and good. I think the song Record High is awesome, and I really am drawn to that song Empty Shotgun, and I kind of like the post-chorus guitar on it, and I like the song melodically what I know now. I think when Dylan can push himself into more interesting subject matter of songs, he's gonna totally pop. I think the songs are really kind of like good old boy, we're from the country, 
type songs right now. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with them, but there's nothing really stand out about them to me either. And I think that's why I'm drawn to songs like Record High or Empty Shotgun, which I think has a thing called like Old Mechanic or the Mechanic song. So I just want to see him push into slightly less safe territory. Speaking of pushing, these new Danning Shea songs, they just dropped three songs from their upcoming album, Bigger Houses, and they're so good. She might be west of Texas, east of Tennessee. Now, I've never especially loved the Danning Shea sound, with some notable exceptions. I've always thought Speechless sounds amazing, and I've always thought that song, What Keeps You Up At Night, is a bit of a guilty pleasure. But man, the production on these new ones just feels rich and organic and rooted, and it makes the harmonies sound so much cooler and more natural, and it's not nearly as processed. And they just do some cool melodic things. There's a key change in Heartbreak on the map. There's this cool run in the chorus of Bigger Houses, where they're like, if what you got still not enough, or like whatever they do, but it kind of goes up when you'd expect it to flow more. And I think Bigger Houses is, is in a way kind of a spiritual cousin to From the Ground Up, which has always been one of their most popular songs. But whereas that song is about building a life together and kind of this dream of what sort of young love and building a family is going to be, this is sort of a little bit more mature of a version saying, it's not all about just getting a bigger house. And I know in the run up to this album on social media, Danny Shayer saying they basically had to reboot their relationship with each other and kind of figure out how are we gonna work as a duo. I feel like you can tell these songs just feel way more inspired than that whole Good Things project, which I think I gave like a three out of 10, but these songs just sound a lot better. There's a young guy, I just listened to his album the other day called Scott Wolverton. I thought his album sounded really fresh. Definitely some sad boy, singer songwriter -y Texas stuff, but we know that I like that. And I'm quite into his song, Seasonal Depression, and I was really into his cover, I didn't know it was a cover even at the time, of this old Bob Dylan song, North County Fair, North Country Fair, really pretty. Haley Witters has a new song called I'm In Love, and I'm in love with it. Talking about who, who I'm out of my mind to buy It's keeping that kind of 90s feel-good thing alive. It's honestly just a feel-good song about her swooning over this guy that's in Levi's and a Chevy, and she's like, look, I love that. And it also features a fun, confusing alcohol lyric where she says, I'm two bottles into a bottle of wine, which is my favorite kind of confused alcohol lyric since Parker McCollum said, after all this back and forth, a fifth won't do. Or I tell myself to stop drinking, but I don't listen to drunks. I love Handle On You. And I love I'm In Love. And I'm glad Haley is still doing this awesome sound that she got on Everything She Ain't. Cat Hasty put out some new songs on this little trio called Midland. My favorite is the first one on there called Why Do Good People Die? And this is just a song that finds Kat asking questions about growing up, what she believes, if God is listening to her, if she knows who she is, kind of reflecting on her place in life. And it's like a beautiful little reflective poem. And I'm glad to see Kat really running with the ball now after that kind of initial spurt of momentum when Pretty Things was popping off years ago. And then she did the Belting Bronco and then we didn't hear from her for a while. I feel like she's back in full force, playing shows, releasing good music, and... I love to see it. Finally, a lot of people sent me this new Alana Springsteen song because it is the latest Chris Stapleton feature that not only doesn't really feature him doing the vocals we want him to do, literally doesn't feature him doing any vocals at all. It's just him playing guitar. And after my whole rant in the last video about how, why do people keep putting these Stapleton features on and then not having him sing a verse? It's just hilarious and ironic. And come on, let's let Stapleton sing for once. So anyway, that's what I've been listening to. This plus like random old men on YouTube telling me how to use construction adhesive and stuff like that. But before I get off, I did want to say just thanks. I feel like I'm at this moment in life where I kind of can't believe I've bought a home. And like this has been my full-time job for over four years now. And um, I'm not like the biggest channel in the world. I'm not some mega celebrity. I'm not rolling in wealth, but you know, I can provide for myself and uh, it's literally by talking about music on the internet and I could not do that without an engaged community and I just feel like I love y'all and everyone here has my back too and uh, we love music together and yeah, I'm just feeling sentimental tonight. So um, thank y'all, love y'all, hope this tides you over till whenever you see me next and sorry that I'm being so obsessed with my house. Bye. Bye.